Today's educational video is on Korsakoff syndrome. Now this is a very sad chronic memory disorder with the root cause most commonly being alcohol use disorder. My name is Dr. Andrew Kim and I'm a board certified psychiatrist. And remember please, this video is for educational purposes. I am not your personal diagnostician or clinician for you or your loved ones, so please consult with your own personal licensed healthcare professionals for diagnostic and treatment advice. This is for educational purposes, but I think this is a very important topic. Most of our society talks about and is familiar with Alzheimer's dementia, vascular dementia, and not as familiar with this memory disorder, Korsakoff syndrome, which is a long-term potential consequence of alcohol use disorder. Now, in order to understand Korsakoff syndrome, we need to talk about what precedes it which is a shorter term cognitive issue called Wernicke's encephalopathy. Wernicke's encephalopathy is a condition where damage or lesions occur in certain areas of the brain as a result of the severe thiamine or B1 deficiency that can occur commonly in the context of chronic alcohol use or alcohol use disorder. So again, this can actually be caused by other conditions that deplete thiamine or vitamin B1, but the most common cause is alcohol use disorder. Now, we know this because we have done autopsy data, and autopsy data has shown that in about 12.5 patients who abused alcohol or had alcohol use disorder had lesions consistent with the lesions we see in Wernicke's encephalopathy. So how does Wernicke's encephalopathy present itself? Well, there is a classic presentation that we call the classic triad, which presents with three different things. Number one, encephalopathy, hence it's in the title. Encephalopathy is just significant, profound confusion and disorientation in attention. The second part of the triad is oculomotor dysfunction, often with nystagmus or involuntary abnormal beats of your eye movement, um, eye muscle paralysis or weakness, and blurred vision as a consequence. The third and final part of this triad is something called gait ataxia. This is a problem with balance and coordination. So oftentimes you see folks very off balance, taking very kind of stumbling steps that are very wide based in order to keep their balance or maybe even shorter steps than usual. But the problem is this classic presentation that gets pounded into the heads of doctors and nurses and clinicians presents and is applicable to only about one third of patients who present with Wernicke's encephalopathy, meaning two thirds will not present with this triad. They may have other more nonspecific subtle signs like hypothermia, low blood pressure. And because of that, many of these cases go underdiagnosed or underappreciated. Now, if this is properly identified, obviously thiamine supplementation or repletion is part of what needs to take place in addition to treating the other problems related to alcohol. Now, this is Wernicke's encephalopathy. And if you have repeated bouts of this, whether recognized presentations or unrecognized presentations, but repeated bouts of Wernicke's is what puts you at risk for the long-term consequence. So again, Korsakoff syndrome is the late end manifestation of having repeated bouts of Wernicke's encephalopathy, most commonly caused by alcohol use disorder. So what are the core features of Korsakoff's? First and foremost, is a combination of anterograde and retrograde amnesia. So what does that translate to? Anterograde amnesia is you having the problem with now forming new memories moving forward. Imagine how tragic that is. You have a wonderful day with your friends, your family, just have a good day in general, and you can't form that memory and remember it moving forward. Now, you may also start losing memories of the past. Not all of them, so some of your remote memory remain, remains intact, but you can actually start having problems recalling other past memories. So it goes in both directions, anterograde and retrograde amnesia. Now, number two, there is a 
relative preservation of your other cognitive skills. So memory is the primary area that gets affected. Number three, apathy may set in. So it's possible that you may lose some of your, your zest and your spirit and your spontaneity, and you just be, may, might present as more dulled or muted to some degree. Vision problems may occur. And another interesting feature is confabulations. So what are confabulations? So confabulations are an emergence of memories, of experiences that in reality never took place. And this is kind of an unintentional process. So this is different than someone who's um, just malingering or just lying on purpose. This is an unintentional process. So I might say to someone, let's say Johnny, who has Korsakoff syndrome, I would say, Johnny, what did you do yesterday? And Johnny spontaneously says, I went to visit my mom, when in fact he didn't. And this is a feature of Korsakoff's. It can be very spontaneous and instant and seamless, almost seeming like he just told the truth right off the bat. And not in a malicious way again. Um, and finally, another feature is that patients and folks who are suffering from Korsakoff's are unaware of the process that's happening. They are unaware that their cognition and their memory is being affected in this way. So here is what is so tragic and difficult about recognizing Korsakoff syndrome, is that because it is so primarily focused for the most part on memory, um, those who are affected by this may not miss a beat. And in a social conversation, a casual conversation, especially if you don't know this person and you really don't know about their comings and goings and may not catch them in a situation where you can recognize the memory deficit or a confabulation, everything may see fine on a superficial level. So people who are interacting with folks with Korsakoff's may not even realize there's a problem at hand. So it really takes someone who knows this individual who can recognize that confabulations are happening, that memory deficits are happening. And this is what makes diagnosing this very challenging. Now, sadly and tragically, it is very rare that individuals recover from Korsakoff syndrome. Now, are there methods where some of the cognitive deficits can be reversed and slight improvement can occur? Yes. Um, there have been attempts with making sure, you know, thiamine is sufficiently repleted, cutting back, obviously, on what the root cause is, like chronic alcohol use, even attempts using certain medications that are meant for other dementias may have had some modest and maybe, you know, mild benefit. But sadly, all in all, uh, to not produce any kind of false narrative or false hope, this is truly an irreversible situation. And this is something that is likely going to be chronic moving forward. So a lot of the focus of what happens after this is recognized is kind of the practical psychosocial supports of how can we support this individual knowing that there are these memory deficits, these confabulations, and what supports need to be put in place into their daily and weekly lives to keep them safe and provide them with the support that they need to improve their quality of life and ensure that they can still thrive. So I hope that you found this information helpful because again, this is a very specific memory disorder, long-term consequence of alcohol use that is not talked about much at all in our society. And I figured this would be helpful to supplement the videos that have been getting pretty popular on my channel with alcohol use disorder, alcohol withdrawal, alcohol detox, is that this is something that can be more of a later stage consequence um, that needs to be recognized so that whether it's yourself or others who can get help for the situation. So again, I hope you found this video helpful. Please like, please subscribe if you want to support my channel so I can continue to put out helpful educational material like this. Dr. Andrew Kim, thank you for checking in everyone.